Hello. In this video, we are going to take a look at um, a function we've been asked to write. It's a solution to the second question on our practice test. Um, so let's start off by just taking a look at the header and make sure we understand it. So the blow function will return the sum of all elements. This is a really important skill. This is something you have to know how to do if you want to if you want to be a computer science student and you want to program because it's something that is done all the time for a lot more of other algorithms. Uh, it's the parameter is a list and it contains a list of integer values that should be add, not and. And the return types is is it returns uh, the sum of the list. So here are a couple examples. If we pass it the list one two three four, we return ten. If we pass it an empty list, we return zero. And if we pass it four five eight one one, that returns nineteen. So. Um, just a quick, quick comment on this. This question is checking to see if you can loop through a list and find the sum of all elements. Again, like I said earlier, this is a really fundamental skill you need to be able to do. Um, I think another good comment here is that if you know how to do this, if you, or if you know how to loop through all elements of a string, then you, can, you know how to do it. list. I really want to kind of draw your attention to this connection here. It's the exact same idea. Um, you know, we talk about a string, and a string has a length of 5, and the indexes are 0 to 4. We talk about a list, and a list has 5 elements, and its index is 0 to 4 as well. So it's the exact same structure. So we start off by initializing sum to 0, and then I set up my 4i and range loop. Again, it's good to note there are other types of loops you can use to do this more efficiently. I tend to stick with the four i in range at this level, partly because I think it's a nice kind of one to understand if you want to transfer it to Java or another language. Um, so remember the way the four i range works is it's going to start at this value, it's going to continue as long as i is less than this, and we're going to increment by one each time. Remember, if we if we change this to a minus one, it's actually going to check that your i is greater than this condition. So then all we do is we just do a self-referencing assignment statement. We say sum is equal to sum plus listed i, and we return the sum. And if we bring this back in, there's a little test code. Give this a whirl. And there we go. We get 10, 0, 19. So again, really essential algorithm. Please make sure not only you can reproduce it, but you understand how to actually write it. Because again, a, a nice modification, and let's just write this in here. Nice modification is something like find the sum of every second element starting at index zero. And if and what what we're trying to get at here is that often students will take this code and they'll memorize it and they'll do something like this, um, but we want to find the sum of every second element starting at index zero. So we can go up every second element. There's two ways to do it. One way is you could you could do something like if i mod two is equivalent to zero, meaning that this is going to check every second element. So it's going to be zero, and then it's going to go. It's going to take the element at zero, add it at two, add it four. But an even more efficient way to do this. If you understand how the loop structure is set up, is you're going to change this one to a two, and then you're going to step up i by two each time. I hope this video helped, and as always, please post any questions or any other, anything you want. Have a wonderful day.